So, mentioned that uh, it may be risky to, to, to trade in options. So, he, he, here is a, is a simple numerical example, not necessarily very realistic, but uh, it sh should uh, serve the purpose. Uh, it's showing how you can actually Trading in options is, is like uh, uh, being able to borrow uh, money to, to get into more risky positions. This, this is what this example is about. So it's called implicit leverage. Leverage meaning uh, borrowing, uh, having a lot of borrowed uh, uh, money uh, in your portfolio. Uh, so a simple example. Let's look at uh, 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 stock and, and the call option on this stock. Yeah? And uh, let's assume that the stock price today, so today now is denoted zero, S of zero is a hundred dollars, and uh, there is a call option uh, on, um, on on the stock, and the call option today the price is two point five dollars, and the strike price is hundred. Okay? So th these are not necessarily unrealistic uh, numbers. This may this may happen, uh, and let's consider only three possible scenarios at maturity. Uh, good, uh, kind of uh, intermediate and bad, so I put here for good, let's look at the scenario, what happens if the stock price goes to 105, uh, and what happens if the stock price goes to 101, so moved only a little bit, uh, or if it goes down to 98. Right? So I'm going to have a table in the next slide, but we can already see easily what's going to happen with the stock, right? I'm, I'm uh, making a uh, you know, I made 5% here, uh, go, goes to 105, I started with 100, here uh, I'm uh, making 1%, uh, and uh, here I'm losing 2%, uh, but with the, with the option, uh, it's going to be slightly, not slightly, but it's going to be different, so let's look at the next slide for that, just remember these numbers, so 105, 101, and 98, uh, and the uh, strike price is 100. Uh, so, uh, by the way, we can how many call options we can buy here? Uh, we can buy 40 call options uh, for $100. Let's assume that you start with $100. So you either buy one stock, one share of the stock, or you buy uh, 40 of the call options. All right, continuing that example, as we said, we invest $100 which is either one stock or 40 options. And I already told you in the previous slide, it, uh, you know, the stock went to 105, so 5% 5 uh, profit in the good state. Um, in the mid state, it, it went to 101, so it was 1%. Best state in the bad state, it went to 98, so it's a loss of 2%. Now with options, let's see what happens. So in the good state, uh, for each option, I'm going to make a payoff at maturity, profit at maturity at least, of, of five dollars. Right? It went to 105. The strike price was 100. Uh, was 100. So I'm making 105 minus 100, which is which is five dollars. Uh, so I have 40 options times five. It's 400. It's 200 dollars. But I paid 100 dollars for those options at the beginning. Right? So I'm making. 5 per options, 40 options, which is 200, uh, and that's, uh, but I have to subtract $100 that I paid for those options. So I made $100, I made $100 uh, extra, so my, my return is 100%. I invested $100, uh, and uh, I, I, recover, I profited by making another 100 Okay, okay that's the good state. So you know, not bad. Uh, in the mid state, the stock did go up, but only to 101. So, in terms of the payoff at maturity, I'm making how much? One dollar per option, right? Because it was 101 uh, minus uh, 100, which is one dollar per, per option, which is 40 dollars altogether. But I paid 100 at the beginning. Right, so I'm making 40 in terms of the exercise payoff, but I paid 100 at the beginning, so 40 minus 100 is minus 60. Uh, out of my 100 dollars, that's like losing 60 percent. Okay. So even even if the stock went up, 
even though I made the option was in the money, uh, I made money at the end, but I paid more at the beginning, I'm still losing 60%. In the bad state, it's going to be worse, obviously. Uh, 98 was the uh, price of the stock. Uh, now, whether it's 98 or 97, whatever, it doesn't make any difference for options. It's out of the money for the call option. Uh, it's going to be zero payoff per option. Uh, and the I just simply lose the money that I paid initially, uh, all of the money that I paid initially, $100 or whatever uh, it is. Uh, but my in any case, my loss is 100%. Right? It's just the option uh, ended up, uh, options ended up, the options ended up being uh, out of the money. I lost all, all of my money. I lost 100%. Yeah? So th this is it's a simple example, but it, it shows you, you know, if you just look at these numbers, 5, 1, and minus 2 percent, and 100 and minus 16 and minus 100. This is much more volatile. You can make much uh, higher profits, but also much uh, higher losses uh, when traded with the same investment of $100, trading in options relative to trading in, in just the underlying asset. All right? This is why, why people say that options uh, provide traders with uh, implicit leverage. Implicitly, it is as if you borrowed more um, extra money to, if like, like if you had borrowed more money to trade in uh, more shares of the stock, you you would have obtained uh, maybe returns like this. But uh, um, but you know here here it's it's just using options. You can you can in fact uh, generate these trades where the the returns are very high uh, or very low. Yeah. So that's just something to have in mind. Now here's another example just to show that option type payoffs can be hidden anywhere in, in uh, relatively simple looking uh, instruments that uh, may be offered by just the standard bank to standard cu customers. Uh, you know, any, any type of kind of a nonlinear payoff can be thought of uh, as an option payoff. Uh, so this is something called uh, an equity-linked bank deposit. So your bank might offer you something like this, and this uh, is something that uh, does happen in practice. Uh, suppose they tell you, well, um, you can invest with us $10,000, and um, the, the, uh, your return is going to depend whether a certain index of stocks, a certain economic variable which can be observed, is um, either below the current value, which is let's say 1300, uh, 1300, or above that. Yeah? I, the return is going to depend whether the index goes below or, or, or above, is below or above a certain level after 5.5 years. Yeah? So looking at the value of the index 5.5 years from now, and just looking whether it's below uh, 1,300 or above. And if it's below, uh, you just get back your 10,000. Okay? Uh, the point is that you're not getting any interest during 5.5 years. You, you are just getting back your investment, but without, with zero interest. So you have to be offered something uh, good in the other case. So in the other case, I didn't write it here, but I mean a return if the index is above 1300 uh, after 5.5 years. In that case, you get your 10,000 and you get some extra interest on that. And how is the interest computed? Let's say it's 70% a, it's a of the whatever percentage return uh, uh, was uh, obtained on the index. Okay, so it's going to depend on how much index is above uh, 1,300. Uh, and so you compute that percentage return. Uh, you reduce it a little bit by 0.7, uh, and then uh, apply that on 10,000 to get the interest you are getting on your 10,000. Yeah. So, so just to make this more clear, uh, with numbers, suppose that the index ends up at 1,500. Okay, 1,500. Uh, after 5.5 years, so your return would be your initial 10,000 plus 10,000 times this percentage, but multiplied by 0.7. Yeah, so it's a 
this is the percentage return, 1500 over 1300 minus 1, that's the percentage return on the index, you reduce it by a factor of 0.7, uh, and then you apply it on 10,000, you add that interest to your initial interest, it happens to be $11,077. Uh, so, in this case, you do get some interest back, and that interest depends on, uh, on how well the index did, and it's reduced by, you know, 70%. So, so it's, it's something that it's relatively easy to explain to uh, anybody, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, it, it may look good or may not look good to the customer, uh, but really, how, how would the bank how would the bank know, you know, which numbers to put here, right? Uh, it should it be 70% here or, or some other number? Or, or, and should it compare to 1300 or some other number? Well, the bank would have to have somebody who took a course like this and who understands options, uh, because really what you have here is a nonlinear payoff, therefore it's really an option, right? You can think of this payoff uh, as a bond, bond meaning just a fixed promised payoff in the future, which is $10,000. Uh, plus, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a linear transformation of a call option on an index, right? You are really comparing the future value of, of the index to, to some fixed value, which is 1300. Uh, okay, you are multiplying by 70%, but that's just a linear transformation. So, so it's, it's really like a call option on an index because y it's and it's, it's a call option because it pays only if the index is above this 1300. So 1300 would be like the strike price. So uh, it's, it really has all the features of the call option. It pays only if the underlying is above a certain level. And it pays basically the difference, although here it's a little bit more complicated with some kind of a linear transformation. But, but it's, uh, in principle, it's a call option on an index. Okay? So if... Uh, if uh, you have somebody in the bank who understands pricing of options, uh, they can uh, they can price this uh, they can price this contract in uh, a, at least in standard models, and they can come up with uh, you know you, they can decide whether seventy percent is really the fair is good for the bank or sixty five percent or eighty percent. They could choose this percentage so that at least to some kind of model, maybe Black Scholes model, they are likely to make money on this deal. Okay? Uh, and maybe they are selling a lot of these things, so even if they don't make money on one of them, on average they are hoping to make money. Um, so so I I they will have some kind of mathematical model to decide exactly which numbers here to offer. Right? You, you can play around with two numbers, with either 1300, or 70%, uh, if you are with the bank, you can choose what to offer to your customers. But to really understand which numbers to put here, you do have to have a mathematical model. Okay? You somehow have to uh, decide from a mathematical model uh, what, is, what numbers here would be good for the bank. Now, the customer is not likely to know the black Scholes or option pricing theory. So the customer basically has to trust the bank or if, uh, or just go to another bank and see whether they can get a better deal. And if it's a competitive market, uh, probably the banks will be offering similar deals. And if the customer sees that the deals are similar, then the customer knows, uh, okay, they're probably pricing this more or less fairly. All right, the, the, the last slide uh, in this set of slides uh, is uh, another uh, example of, a, of, of a use of options in terms of insurance or hedging. Uh, and uh, put options are really a natural way to, to, to insure yourself uh, in the following sense in this example. Suppose you are a manager or an employee of a company which, uh, in addition to cash salary, offers you compensation in, the, in shares of the stock of the company. Okay? So you know you will get 100 shares of the company uh, and currently each worth $150, uh, but either you don't get them right away, uh, um, so you know you will get them, let's say, five years from now, or you get them, but you're not allowed to sell them for another five years, which would be typical for uh, executive compensation. Uh, so you are 
as an executive, you may not be allowed to sell this stock, uh, or you don't even have it right now. So, and you you are worried maybe in five years it's going to be much less than one hundred and fifty dollars these shares. Right? So you 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 want to hedge this, and the put put options are really made exactly for a situation like this, because the put option gives you the right to sell for a pre-specified guaranteed price at a, at a pre-specified time. Okay? So suppose you decide in this example, I just uh, this executive decided just to, to, to hedge half of the shares. So suppose uh, you are the executive, you buy 50 put options rather than 100. It's just arbitrary here. So uh, you buy 50 put options with strike price 150. Right? Okay? So that, that means that at least 50 of those shares you know you will, ha you will be able to sell for $150, which is the price today. Okay? So uh, f for you are guaranteed uh, to, to be able to sell your shares for $150 uh, five years from now, um, you know, buying these 50 put options. So that's exactly uh, insurance, right? It's an insurance against the, the fall of the pr stock price of the shares that you received uh, and as as with any insurance if the stock price goes up if your, your company does well uh, you just you know you get nothing if if the if your if your car doesn't have an accident you get nothing you pay the insurance okay you lost the insurance premium that's what you paid for for the peace of mind um, on the other hand if the accident does happen, that, that insurance uh, pays a lot and, and you're happy uh, at least that you had the insurance, not that you had the accident. Um, so in, in, this, in this example, for, for example, if, the, if after five years the share value is, is 100, which, is, which would be bad for you um, uh, in terms of the shares, but at least you will get something from put options, right? You, you lose $50 per, per share, which is 100, you know, on the... On the uh, uh, I don't know whether I computed here for 150 shares. Yeah, okay, for 100, which is a loss of $5,000. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, you do, you are able to to sell those 50 for 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 uh, 150. So you are you are making 50 times 50, which is 2,500, uh, minus the, the the premium, the the price that you paid for the options, right? Yeah. So. The, you can, you know, here I'm doing it with arbitrary numbers. You can, you can, uh, in a specific situation, you can make some kind of a optimization program to try to optimize uh, how many options and what strike prices to 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 buy in, in order to somehow optimize uh, or minimize your risk. Now it's going to depend whether you want to, uh, how much you want to minimize the risk and how much you want to have exposure to profits. Uh, um, as usual, in kind of a mean variance trade-off. Uh, but I I the point of the example is the put options uh, uh, can exactly be used for insurance against uh, something that you hold uh, going down in value.